all of us have an idea of the thing which we are going to see and experience our mind shows us an ideal image of it which induces excitement a sense of pleasure and a feeling that maybe it will be the last thing which i want to possess but the moment you get that thing you see it you feel it and experience it all of a sudden that excitement that enthusiasm and the hope of being content fade away and gradually that eternal craving for something more comes up which gives you the image of another ideal idea but why does it happen why does our longing for more never ends why do we get disappointed after watching the idea in reality well according to me there could be three reasons for this let's start with the first please tell me when do you call a song a great song is it when it makes you dance at a party when do you call a movie a great movie is it when it makes you cry or happy when do you call a painting a great painting when it looks beautiful when you are standing 10 feet away from it no not really you call a song a great song because it contains so many details in it the more you listen to it the more details you notice in it it makes you more relaxed blissful and content you call a movie a great movie because it makes you think about what is crying and what is happiness it has deep meaning into it similarly you call a painting a great painting not because it looks beautiful from 10 feet away a hd wallpaper will look much more beautiful than that it is because the closer you go to the painting the more beautiful it gets you can notice more details and creativity in it which is why it is appreciated now think about how you see the ideas of the things you want your mind shows you the image from 10 feet away it has no details in it no nuances and no subtleties therefore it looks so good and beautiful your mind only shows you one side of the coin which is brighter glowing and beautiful it hides the darker side when you only see one side of something the possibility of another side automatically arises your mind is the genesis of duality whatever the mind tells you is always half truth half side and one dimension when you see things in reality you experience another side of the truth you see beautiful things also have their ugly side good things are also bad and sweet things are also bitter hence comes disappointment your mind surreptitiously fools you into believing that there are two sides of the things first it shows you only the favorable side and once you are interested in it it lets you discover the uglier side so that you start believing the nature of the world is dual there is duality in everything there is good and evil happiness and sadness beauty and ugliness hard work and rest and because of this belief you want what your mind shows you and want to remove what you see in the reality this keeps you in the never ending cycle of desire and experience hence you say reality is often disappointing the second reason for your disappointment could be your limited understanding of things or ignorance towards reality we barely notice the fact that our mind thinks of an idea as a moment not in a timeline the mind describes an idea at a particular moment at that moment you are in a certain emotion there is a certain environment and a certain need and all of it is in perfect harmony with the idea to understand this let's do a quick activity i'll tell you a word and you need to think of its picture in your mind and remember what you have thought so are you ready okay think about a tree does it look like this now think about a flower does it look like this now think of a female does she look like this if the answers are yes then well done you are thinking fine but the only thing is that they could have also looked like this the point is the mind gives you an idea about a moment and it very conveniently ignores the other aspects of it and that moment is often very suitable for your needs the mind always chooses the young aspect of nature it always wants to give you the perfect thing and in this process many factors are neglected you get a limited understanding of the thing and when you go out with that limited knowledge you see things take that shape or form for a very short period of time and all the other time it is different and non conducive to your needs or your idea of perfection 
they are in a completely different form of which you have very limited knowledge which is disappointing it is disappointing to to think that you can never know anything in its totality because things are always changing they are in a constant flux they have their origin their peak of growth and end of growth every change has its own origin peak and end and you can't know everything about anything at every time hence your mind only lets you see the perfect side of everything and you only seek perfection in everything and as it is not always there you are disappointed the third reason for your disappointment could be that you know there is something perfect which is eternal and not changing suppose you have come from a different planet and have never seen a flower before you accidentally run into a nursery and there you catch sight of hundreds of identical marigolds and you wonder how they could be exactly alike it is possible that one of them doesn't have all the leaves another one is older than the others and the third one is just sprouting however after a little thought you conclude that all marigolds have something in common and you suspect that all of them must have a common origin as well if they are imperfect there must be a perfect one and now you have this irresistible desire to see that perfect marigold which would be much more beautiful in comparison with these copies it is believed that everything we see around us everything tangible can be linked to a soap bubble since nothing that exists in this world of the senses is lasting we know of course that sooner or later every human being and every animal will die and decompose even a block of marble changes and gradually disappears the point is that we can never have true knowledge of anything that is in constant change we can only have opinions about things that belong to the world of senses we can only have true knowledge of things that can be understood with our reason in this sensory world everything flows and nothing is permanent there are only things that come to be and pass away man is a dual creature we have a body that flows which is bound to the world of senses and is subject to the same fate as everything else in this world like a soap bubble but we also have an immortal soul which is not physical the soul can survey the world of ideas the soul existed before it inhabited the body it used to roam around with the perfect ideas but as soon as the soul wakes up in a human body it has forgotten all the perfect ideas then something starts to happen and a wondrous process begins as the humans discover the various forms in the natural world a vague recollection stirs his soul he sees flower but an imperfect flower however it is sufficient to awaken a faint recollection of the perfect flower which the soul once saw in the world of ideas and this stirs the soul with a yearning to return to its true realm plato calls this yearning eros which means love from now on the body and the whole sensory world are experienced as imperfect and insignificant the soul yearns to fly home on the wings of love to the world of ideas thank you for watching